phosphoric acid, phyt phytase, phytates, phytic acid. So if you start getting into the alkaline diet, which is more vegetables, vegetable juices, green foods, really, and herbs. I think the most alkaline food in my body over all these years that I've been experimenting with this stuff as a gastronaut, the medicinal mushrooms. The medicinal mushrooms, most alkaline forming thing. And if you read Dr. Young's book, he says, don't eat mushrooms because they feed candida. Reishi mushroom fights candida as good or better than anything. And he said, well, what about Dr. Young's research? He sent people to my seminars. Were there, I'm like, what are you doing here? Like, Dr. Young sent me to hear about the medicinal mushrooms. Because what he's talking about is portobello mushrooms that you buy in a store that are contaminated with mold, which you really shouldn't eat. Mm -hmm. okay. But the real mushrooms, the advanced mushrooms, the reishi mushrooms, the noble mushrooms are the most powerful immune system weapon things we have. I mean, we have a technology now with everything we've laid out here. One, two, three, and then the fourth step is the little zapper deal, this little deal right here, where we can knock out, we can start turning the corner on anything. And in that kind of a world, we have the answers. We have got, we've, there's a no thing that where it's like, there's, if there's no way, there is a, if there's no choice, there is a, if it's too late, it's not, it's never too late to live, always too early to die. And that's the basis of it. Okay. Having thrown that out there, I wanted to mention also that this sits in and on top of your daily filler. What's filler? Lettuce. 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 Cucumber. <laughs> carrots. <laughs> celery. Avocados. Tomatoes. Which is the best filler ever. I mean, come on. I mean, what we get to eat, you know. Haven't you figured out by now? You eat stuff, it's like every bite of it. It tastes so good, it's hard to believe. How many people have had trouble stop than stopping eating the almond butter? <laughs> How many people have gotten halfway through an almond butter and then realized they might as well just eat the other half? <laughs> Why is that? Because that stuff tastes so good. We know now that raw food is actually the best tasting food. And if we have that as our filler, and then we implement this thing strategically around that, we might notice something. And here's what we notice. Here's what I've noticed. Somebody asked me, I hadn't even thought about this in years. Somebody came up and asked me, are you ever in pain? They just asked me on the side, are you ever in pain? Like, tr give me a truthful answer. And I was like, I hadn't even thought about pain in years. I'm never in pain ever for any reason. Physical pain, I'm like, whoa. And then I started, uh, that caused me to go, whoa, people are in pain. And I had been in pain for years. When I broke my back in 1989, healing that injury, I had been in pain. I could not sit up for 45 minutes and type on a computer. I had to write left-handed because if I wrote right-handed, it would tweak all the fine motor neurons and whatever muscles back here. I couldn't write right-handed, I had to write left-handed. And I had been in pain for years and I, that had been so driven out of my consciousness that I forgot about it. That's what happens, by the way. I've seen that with people who are really powerful healers. And by the way, this is a tremendous symposium of healers in this area here. I mean, it's just incredible. Some of the greatest healers on the whole planet are here. Victorious Kolvinskis. You know, this man can heal you with his words and his vibration. I've been around people who are real psychic healers, like John of God, like our friend Howard Wills. Nick Good and I hang out with Howard all the time. And Howard can heal someone with it. He can go like that and blow light into the person and heal them instantly. But what's interesting about that, I saw him do this with my mom. I was like, Mom, you need to have Howard work on you. So I took him over there. Maybe my mom stayed there nine days at his house. He's like John of God, but he doesn't have, he's not, doesn't have a thing where he, people come, whatever. Just who's ever in front of him, whoever calls, whatever happens, he'll work on them right on that moment, and then he goes about doing his own thing. Very interesting man. Anyway, this is what Howard told me, and this is what happened to my mom. So he starts working on my mom. My mom's like, um, yeah, I got pain here, 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 everywhere. And Howard goes, okay, um, how are you feeling now? I don't really feel any different. I mean, what you, what's supposed to happen? He's like, how you feeling now? She's like, I don't really, no, I don't, nothing's different. 20 minutes later, I'm like, mom, how you feeling? She's like, oh, I feel, I feel pretty good. Howard's like, on a scale of a zero to 10, how, where, where are you? 10 being the most pain. She's like, well, I'm, I'm like down to about a two right now. Howard goes, 
10 minutes later, I'm like, mom, how you feeling? She's like, oh, I feel like really good. I feel fine. And what ends up happening, and this is what Howard tells me and what I've seen, is that when somebody actually gets a healing, they forget that they were ever in pain, they forget they ever had a tumor, they forget that they ever had cancer, they forget that they broke their back, they forget whatever. It just it blows the memory out. That was an important distinction for me personally, to see that, calibrate it, know about that. Because if you're dealing with winding out some old pain, where you want to go with it is a place where you forget that you were ever in pain. You forget it was ever there. Now with this nanobacteria protocol, if you break a bone, if you are in a situation where you're physically injured, you get on even a double or triple dose of everything because when you're injured, that stuff rushes to wherever the injury is. And to make sure you never develop pain and you heal quickly, very swiftly. Enzymes, for example, have been known to accelerate healing two or three times because they go in, they clean up the inflammation and the mess. They're part of this whole program for that reason. Additionally, and on top of all that, brain cognition, our ability to be clever, our ability to stay focused, to get out of the fungal conditions permanently, to get out of the candida forever, to get the eczema off of us permanently, this is part of that way, and you'll, what you'll see is it'll turn a corner for you. It'll turn a corner and you see, whoa, it's going backwards now. Do we want calcification to go up or do we want it to go down? I think they're coming up here with the cane soon, but now we got to get into what's the deal with calcium then? I mean, if we're taking this stuff to get the calcium out, does it take the good calcium out? No, it leaves the good calcium intact. Here's the other thing. Do we need to take more calcium to build more calcium? No. If you're a raw foodist and you eat vegetables and you drink wheatgrass juice and you have all these great things we eat, you don't have to worry about calcium. That goes away as an issue. But here's what you have to worry about or be concerned about. No, we don't have to worry about anything. Here's where you have to put your attention. I've asked these powerful psychics, how do you turn the power on? Yuri Geller is a friend of mine. He's bent a spoon in my hand. The guy's pretty powerful. I said, how does it work? How does the power turn on? I just have to put my attention on it. Howard, how does it turn on? I just have to put my attention on it. How do you heal someone? I have to put my attention on them. So where we're putting our attention, that's where our energy's flowing. Energy flows where our attention goes. Anyway, where we have to be concerned is silicon and magnesium. And these are the areas where raw foodists are always in trouble if they get into the dogmatic Herbert Shelton natural hygiene trip. Yeah. <laughs> I've been through it with those guys. I know you have too. And I, I mean, it's been, it's just, you know, finally, it's finally just, you know, going, it's imploding on itself. Finally, thank God. Thank Goddess. Silicon. Okay, we got it. Five minutes. We're going to cover this. Silicon is found particularly in mature grass right before it flowers. So the young grasses have high calcium. Mature grass has high silicon. Young wild plants have high silicon for bone density. Mature wild plants, like a mature dandelion, has high calcium. Grasses do the reverse of most things in nature. They take calcium and they convert it into silicon. And most weeds take silicon and convert it into calcium. And this transmutation is happening all the time in our bodies. It always has. Lavoisier's law is not accurate, which says if you need calcium, you need to eat calcium. That's completely incorrect. And the quicker we get off that, the quicker we'll heal ourselves and get out of bone problems. What we really need is foods high in silicon. Again, that's mature grass, young sprouted plants, but in particular, these herbs. Hemp leaf. That's why it's illegal. You start eating hemp leaf I did this year, I grew hemp this year. I told you about it. It was so awesome. I, it was, I hadn't grown hemp since I was 18. Used it, ate it, guzzled it. Bugs don't eat it. You don't have to do anything. Not only that, we notice something. When the seed forms, the seed will actually sprout on the plant and then drop sprouted. Never seen anything like that before. It was cool.